Today is Thursday, May the 30th, 2013. My name is David Favor, and I'm going to give a um, quick, what would I call it, uh, your super duper decoder ring for webpagetest.org uh, report card scores. So, um, I was talking with uh, Rob Burns um, yesterday. We were looking at uh, PR Reach, his site, and uh, in talking with him, I realized that you know people probably use webpagetest.org and have no idea how to decode the information they get back. So, um, the primary uh, first spot to look when you uh, run your website through webpagetest.org, which will tell you the uh, um, performance of your site and where the areas are you can focus on optimizing your performance. Um, and that's uh, the first place to look is this this set of uh, big red, um, you know these uh, these guys here. Well, it seems like I'm having trouble highlighting. You can see it here. The these uh, first bytes here, and what you should see there is all A's. Um, I I done. Uh, I only release uh, sites into the wild that have all A's. Now, the only um, exception to the rule is this uh, last one over here, which is effective use of CDN. The only time CDNs actually help a, a site are two cases. Uh, one, when the site's so broken uh, and the expertise is lacking, um, you know, with the person's technical team, so they have no clue how to fix it. Uh, otherwise, if a site is uh, tuned up like my sites, if I used a CDN, my sites would slow down, uh, which is counterintuitive, but that is uh, the way it is. Now, the other uh, eff effective use of CDNs is if you, um, in some cases, if you're serving your own um, <clears throat> audio and video content, uh, if the content is extremely small and uh, very low uh, bit rates, there may be some uh, advantages to serving content off a of CDN if you're uh, going across uh, ocean boundaries, like in other words, you've got a lot of clients in China or Japan or Europe, and your servers in the, are in the U.S. Even that, though, um, it's a little questionable at this point because um, the uh, streaming server technology and the the uh, uh, players that are in the the default players that are in the uh, normally used browsers like Chrome and uh, Firefox and Safari uh, are just so stellar right now. I'm I'm unsure if even a CDN uh, is useful in that particular situation. Um, all right, so let's uh, take a look at here. I'll do a little decoding. Um, the first money suck here is going to be the time to first byte, which. Um, I only release uh, sites into the wild that are sub-second response time. In other words, the first byte hits the browser within, um, well, less than one second. And usually the entire content, um, well, always the entire content serves within a second. In other words, the content meaning the HTL component. So if you look down here uh, and you take a look at here, the, this uh, PR reach or www.prreach.com, the slash is here that indicates an HTML component. So um, you should always uh, target having your HTML serve within uh, a second. In other words, uh, this content starts serving around uh, the one second mark. Uh, in other words, if somebody goes to prreach.com, it gets re redirected, which is this line here, to www.prreach. So the first second is just lost in redirection time which is very bad. Uh, and then uh, starting at the one second mark, two seconds, three and a half, so it takes two and a half seconds, 2348 milliseconds, almost two and a half seconds, to send this entire content down the pipe. Um, if your site isn't serving really at the sub-second rate, then you're going to lose a lot of people because people's uh, attention span and patience are so low that they'll just leave which is very uh, sad, but that is the way it, uh, the way it is. So this first byte here, this entire, um, the way to optimize this is um, 
Um, the first suggestion I'd make is to switch this redirect where the www.pr reach redirected to the bare domain without www. Uh, and the reason for that is that uh, it used to be that there was a um, there was some rhyme or reason to using a www if you were using actual subdomains on your entire website. Like you're running a blog farm and you've got you know 50,000 users. Well, that's a really bad idea now because uh, Google uh, no longer treats the subdomains as separate domains. Uh, that also is one of the reasons that all these uh, content farms and blog farms and um, you know places that had lots of subdomains uh, allocated to different uh, users with completely disparate content. In other words, content that doesn't focus on one single niche across all the subdomains. Uh, anytime you you're mixing up um, content from like uh, you know vegan cafes and plumbing companies and insurance and you know what whatever you're doing if you're mixing up a bunch of content from a bunch of niches then um, the entire system will be penalized. So better to redirect from www.prreach to prreach.com. That that would be the first fix I'd do. Uh, and then this chunk of time here, though, um, this chunk of time, um, the primary reason that these sites are so slow, that chunk of time relates to two, well, it relates to one primary um, consideration. That's how fast, uh, how fast data is being extracted from a disk and formatted if required and then shove down the pipe to the browser. So the first optimization here is to make sure that your file system is tuned up. And all this is at Crazy Fast Websites. I mean, you, you can take a look at it, um, crazyfastwebsites.com slash checklist. Uh, so the first thing is to make sure that you're running a, uh, a modern file system. And probably the, the most uh, common you can run is called ext4. Uh, which is kind of like um, the well it's right now uh, on all the modern Linux distributions that's the default file system so uh, first checkpoint is to uh, make sure you're running uh, ext4 to fix this uh, second um, check to do is uh, on your uh, file system um, mount options make sure that there's no a time and no dir a time set and what those do is that the default I have no idea why you know what the the what the um, uh, the logic is for this but the default file systems are uh, the file system defaults are set at um, to have uh, either a time set on or rel a time, and what that means, a time is access time. So that means that every time somebody reads a file, the operating system writes to the disk to update the access time. Well, that's just crazy because who really cares when somebody accesses a file? Now, it's very useful to know when somebody when a file is modified, and that's a very fairly rare occasion. Um, when a file is accessed, though. Um, there's there's no I can't really think of a good reason why you'd re really require that so if you turn that off that will um, I've seen some systems that were running at 90% uh, load on the disk and just flipping these two um, options off which takes about 30 seconds to go and find the the uh, file and add the um, options and reboot your computer um, I've seen those systems go from 90% disk loads down to 10% just by changing this so that's the second big one. Now the, the third big one is that um, PR reach, if I recall, um, uh, Rob said that they were using a MySQL database. So there's a couple of, um, MySQL is a database which uh, tends to take a lot of um, uh, memory and disk accesses to come up with a set of results. And so there's a couple of modifications uh, to fix MySQL, and I went through this with uh, David McInnes here recently, um, the uh, originator of uh, PR Web, and he's using this technique on all his new projects. And he said the uh, the difference in speed is astounding. So the first uh, fix for MySQL is to uh, uh, completely remove 
uh, MySQL and leave your data files in place. In other words, there's two ways you can remove uh, packages off Linux distributions. You can just remove the, the code or you can remove the code and data files. Well, you have to be a little bit careful of that because if you remove the data files, that means that your, your all your data in your database is gone too. So don't do that. Um, and also, when before you do this, I'd recommend that you know you get a a uh, backup system set up. And also, you've done uh, restore testing, which means you've taken your backup and gone to a fresh machine, different than your live machine, and you've actually restored those databases or restored your backup, which is the database. And if you're using uh, something like uh, WordPress, it's also the files that go along the, the database. Uh, I know a lot of people, well I know a lot of people that don't make any backups at all, which is stupid. Uh, the next set of people, which is a much smaller minority, actually make backups. And I've probably only met maybe 10 people in my entire uh, technical career that actually do uh, restoration testing, which means they've actually taken their backup and restored it to a machine to make sure that it's working. Uh, I have worked with clients in the past that have had uh, 10, in one case, 10 years of uh, backups that the backup procedure was faulty and they had a system crash um, where all their disks just, um, as I recall, there was a power spike that uh, basically uh, blew out all the power supplies and caused random trash to be written across the disks as the disks were spinning and the power supplies were frying and so they lost everything and they went to restore their backup and um, their backup was inconsistent so uh, we had to take years of backups and kind of merge them together in funky ways to come up with uh, some semblance of a uh, system that actually works so make sure you've got restoration process so remove uh, MySQL and add uh, MariaDB and MariaDB is just actually it's actually um, the same uh, code base as MySQL, uh, except it's actually uh, a code base that works. And what I mean by that is that all the um, or uh, the majority of the the community patches that have been laying around for years and years that Oracle refuses to add to MySQL to fix known stuff that's been broken for some things for almost ten years. Um, the um, the original developer uh, Monty from um, uh, when MySQL first started its life, actually is running MariaDB because he got so tired of uh, messing with Oracle. In fact, he used to work for Oracle managing uh, the MySQL project and he got so frustrated he just left and started his own company. So MariaDB is just a version of MySQL that actually works and what I mean by that is that typically it will run um, you know one to two x faster than MySQL um, because it there are additional optimizations of the when you compile code you can optimize it in different ways and all the optimizations there are there and uh, it's just a drop-in uh, replacement uh, it's extremely easy to use now if you'd like the maximum speed um, I won't go into why this is but you'll get an even bigger speed bump uh, up in in performance if you do a database unload of your MySQL database and then you completely remove MySQL and all your data files, re install MariaDB and then load your, um, uh, do a database load from your actual data files, that'll get you even a bigger performance increase. And then the next thing to, that will help fix this um, 2348 milliseconds time is to um, uh, optimize uh, MySQL's use of temporary disk space. So what happens is in MySQL when you are building a page like in WordPress you do what's called a select on sometimes um, many different tables of data inside uh, your database and the select has criteria like you know look up a post by name or look up a series of posts or a category of posts or pages or whatever and all these um, selects take huge amounts of um, uh, memory space to resolve them into actual records of data. And what happens is if MySQL is uh, happily running along, it's merely doing its job of sucking data off the disk and, and building these um, sets of data to hand back to PHP to create a WordPress page, if the memory becomes exhausted, the, the core memory, like the RAM that um, 
uh, becomes exhausted to to uh, finish the uh, complete select sequence, then the the um, overflow that's required begins rolling over to disk. So now that means that every time your uh, a client comes and looks at a page on your WordPress site, it may take uh, thousands or tens of thousands. I've seen in some cases disk accesses just to give that one page of data back. So the way to fix this is that you move the slash temp directory and the slash var temp directory uh, in uh, your uh, uh, Linux system into what's called tempfs, tmpfs. And all this is written up again at um, crazyfastwebsites.com slash checklist of the step-by-step -step how to do this. And so um, the uh, moving uh, temp and uh, var temp into uh, tempfs, um, changing the file system to ext4, no a time, no dir a time, uh, swapping uh, MariaDB for MySQL, and putting temp and var temp into tempfs space in memory. I'd say for for me that would probably take um, around an hour of time to do and test. And I would probably also do a, um, a database dump, so there would be some amount of time in there for the database dump just to make sure I had a, a, a working copy of my database. So for, I, you know, for an hour of time on, on my part or anybody that's really competent, um, you could probably get that, uh, I'm guessing, get most of that um, uh, time uh, dissipated there. So that's the first byte time. Uh, keep alive enabled is simple. You just go to uh, apache.org and look at the HTTP, um, the web server docs, and that's a single um, line to fix in the apache.conf configuration file, and then you just uh, restart Apache. Same way with compress uh, transfer, that's a single, you know, f couple of lines of directives in the Apache um, uh, comp file. Uh, so, and same way with the last item, the cache uh, static content, that's also a change of directive. So, uh, for one hour, I'd say that I could probably take um, the first two Fs, the first D, and the last F to an A. Now, the compressed images, the D for compressed images is going to be, um, that's going to be very site specific. Now, what I do is I've got a tool I wrote that uh, will start at the top of a um, a directory structure like a domain and search throughout that whole domain and find every image file, uh, every ping, JPEG, ICO, which are the fave icon files that get returned, which are the little uh, little icons up here, um, and uh, ping images. Um, those are the those are the main ones. Um, and it'll just find all those files. It'll uh, drop a copy of the. It'll rename the original file to .org, uh, .org and then compress that file uh, at um, you know each different uh, ping, GIF, JPEG, ICO has a different compression technology you have to use on it. And it'll just compress all that images, all those images. And it usually takes um, you know maybe uh, one or two seconds, or maybe three or four for each image. So, you know, if you got 100 images, it'll take, uh, you know, two, 300 seconds to do a whole website. So I guess actually in that case, for me, it would take less than an hour to fix this whole site to where it would have all A's there. Now, that the dependent factor is that it's actually a uh, dedicated server. You, you can't do any of this stuff if you're using some stupid hosting service like HostGator or Bluehost or anybody like that you have to actually be able to get into your operating system and or have somebody get into it and fix it. Um, so anyway, that's the that's the hour long uh, how I would fix it. Now, I told uh, Rob this yesterday and let's see if they made any changes. Let's see if they took my advice and did a uh, hour long uh, uh, check of their site here. HTTP. PR reads. Let's see if anything's changed from uh, yesterday to today. So it's at the head of the queue. Uh, All right. Well, looks like they did attempt to make some changes here. Let's see what we got. 
All right, so they got the the uh, compressed transfer turned on. That's that. I mean, that's good. And why they didn't? Why the tech guys didn't just go ahead and turn on cache static content and turn on uh, keep alive? I have no idea uh, because those are just as simple to turn on as compressed transfer. Um, now let's take a look at the first byte time here and see if um, yeah. So see, we're still at twenty three. 99. Um, so let's look at one other thing too. Uh, I'm going to pause this and find a tool and uh, see if it's still working and uh, uh, show you a little bit of more data here to take a look at the, what the uh, what the fix for the HTML uh, might also be to speed this up. I had to find this uh, link here because they're uh, so far down in the search results it's kind of hard to find them occasionally. I've typed in PR Reach here and we're going to submit this and the last time I tried the service it was completely broken so we'll we'll see if we get farther this time. Well, it looks like it's actually uh, chugging around and turning around there. This is one of the, one of those other tools that uh, gives some uh, really great uh, input. Well, see, it says that the total. Um, the total HTML. Um, size here is 434 bytes which is very very low and they're saying just for this component running at full bore speed it would only take 220 milliseconds to download which is good so what that tells me is that this is not a problem with the um, uh, the actual HTML that's being generated on the site it's a problem with either MySQL or uh, more than likely a combination of how MySQL is uh, tuned up and also how the uh, underlying operating system is tuned up. Oh, you know, there's one other thing too um, that I did notice. I've got a client that um, was asking me to take a look at their systems and they had a problem that I hadn't really thought was actually a problem anymore because they're running a version of Linux that is so freakishly old that they're hitting an old kernel bug. Well, not really a kernel bug, but the way the Linux kernel used to, to work is that they had what was called a global um, kernel lock. And what that lock was is anytime there was happening, see anything happened in the kernel that required uh, to happen atomically. In other words, um, uh, atomically means that it can't be interrupted that if it's interrupted in, in any way then there can be a loss of data for example if um, if you've got data coming in on your modem you can't stop that transfer for very long without losing data uh, and so the way that they handle that in the old kernels in the 2.6 kernels the earlier ones was that they had this global lock and so for example when your modem said sent a interrupt to the kernel and said hey I've got data the kernel would lock itself and just read data until there was no more data and then unlock it unlock itself and it would get back to work um, the client I've got today has an old kernel that's way way like 2618 some I mean I don't know how old that that'd probably be a three four year old kernel the current kernel is up to 3.8 so um, I would say that you know probably the first thing um, when you're looking to set up a dedicated server, make sure that you're using the latest version of um, uh, Stable Ubuntu, which will give you the 3.8 kernel and the, a, a very recent uh, version of PHP and a very recent version of uh, Apache, so that you've got um, the you know the latest speed enhancements from all these projects. You're leveraging those because you you don't want to try to go after increasing your speed on your site without you know starting with the best software and the best um, uh, underlying you know plumbing and electrical and infrastructure of your server to begin with that it's just you know it's like trying to run with weights on your legs so uh, that's uh, another thing that I guess I ought to put into my um, 
uh, crazy fast website check is the uh, kernel version check. So that's a, uh, a wrap up or uh, uh, decoding of um, uh, PR reach, or uh, actually the um, PR reach was our example. It's a decoding of the uh, web page uh, report card score there.